Hi, I'm Kyle Bork, an orthopedic sports medicine surgeon in Houston, Texas. Today I'll be showing you my all inside technique for repairing medial meniscal capsular injuries, otherwise known as ramp lesions, utilizing MyTech TruSpan all inside devices. We know that ACL injuries rarely occur in isolation, and between 9 and 17% occur with a medial meniscal capsular injury or a ramp lesion. The posterior horn of the medial meniscus is a large secondary stabilizer of the ACL and thus repair of these injuries is vital to offloading the ACL graft and decreasing the risk of re-rupture. Good, so here we're starting with our arthroscopy of a right knee. I've created standard anterolateral and anteromedial portals using spinal, spinal needle localization for our anteromedial portal to make sure I can get to the back posterior horn. I've done a little bit of an MCL release to make it easier for everyone at home to see. Um, we're gonna be looking today at ways to repair uh, medial meniscal capsular injuries, uh, otherwise known as ramp lesions. So we see here, if we're just scoping this knee, this meniscus looks pretty normal. We see a lot of it because of the MCL, but it looks very normal. Look at the top looks normal, look at the bottom, it looks normal. This really highlights the importance of, I think, in all ACLs of driving into the posterior medial aspect of the knee and looking for ramp lesions. So we're actually gonna take our shaver first I do this in all cases, but especially chronic cases, to uh, stimulate healing. And we know that ramp lesions are more frequently seen in common, or sorry, in chronic ACL injuries. So I've already created a posture medial portal. So good, I like to take my shaver in from the posture medial portal and kind of debris here, almost like a bank heart, to create some bleeding and some healing in this area. So taking the shaver and really working down onto the bone even to generate some healing there. Good, so we see here, back in the posterior aspect of the knee, with the knee in flexion, this tear is opening up. So we see here very, very nicely, the back of the medial meniscus, here's the capsule, and here's this hole here, um, this medial meniscal capsular injury, which is where we commonly see it. But again, you can't see it from the front at all. Really important, we drive our scope in the back of the knee uh, to look for this. So we're gonna go back to the front of the knee to fix this with an all inside repair using TruSpan uh, all inside suture devices. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna introduce a sled into the knee so that we can safely insert our meniscal repair device. We're gonna take our 24 degree TruSpan, which I like for these posterior tears. Have your assistant slide this out. I'm gonna hand that to you, very nice. And then what we're gonna do is I like to put at least two to three on the bottom and one on the top. I like to put the first one on the bottom so that it doesn't uh, over reduce superiorly. So we can see I'm coming in first here, you're pushing into the meniscus on the inferior aspect, squeezing the trigger to deploy it, and then coming all the way out and then turning the needle down so that I'm capturing the capsule, pushing it all the way in here to catch that, capture, uh, to capture that capsule in the back, deploying the second device, bringing it out, all right, so now we've, we're introducing our pusher cutter into the knee, sliding it along. I'm gonna pull back, not on the silver bit, making sure my thumb stays up on the blue part. I'm gonna pull the suture to reduce, we can see that suture tighten. I'm pulling it together there until it's nice and firm. And once I'm happy with how firm it is, then I push the silver bit to cut it flush. You see it's actually, you can see it already, it's kind of starting to reduce this. So repeat that process a couple more times. So we're gonna introduce the sled again, and I'm pushing this in, good, and I'm having my assistant pull it out, very nice. And then I usually come on top with the second one, introduce it into the posterior horn here, pushing in, deploying the first anchor, and then very slowly backing it out because you don't wanna to pull too far away from the meniscus. If you pull too far away from the meniscus, the second anchor will deploy. And then I sneak, I try to sneak above the meniscus with the second one into the capsule in the back to reduce again. We wanna reduce the meniscus to the capsule. I'm gonna slide down. I'm just gonna move the scope back just a touch. Yep, perfect. And sometimes just kind of pushing and giving it a little tug back and forth with small motions to make sure I get exactly the amount of tension that I want. Good. And once I'm happy with that, coming in using the silver bit to cut it flush. Good. And then I'd put another one in inferiorly right in here. 
So I'm going to introduce our third one. So I like this construct because it's very easy to use uh, with less assistance. If you don't have a bunch of fellows or uh, mid-levels, good. And also it's a knotless construct, which is very nice. So we're going to slide this one on the underside. So there's no knots that I have to worry about on the articular surface. Again, we're pushing in, we're deploying it. And we're slowly kind of twisting it as we come out. Good, and then I'm coming underneath. So we see one's here, and I want to come underneath into the capsule here. So yeah, they come in zero, which is straight, 12 degree and 24. I really like the 24, as it allows me to put one angled up into the meniscus and the one angled down into the capsule, all from the same device. We can see here, it's reduced nicely. So now as we drive into the back of the knee, we can see this capsule is reduced now to the meniscus. Post-operatively, um, what we can see is as we bring the knee into extension, the tear stays reduced, inflection it stays reduced, but it's wanting to displace inflection. So I'll actually limit flexion to 90 degrees for four weeks, um, and then gradually aim for full flexion uh, between eight and 12 weeks. I let them weight bear is tolerated because it's a vertical tear, weight bearing actually reduces uh, the meniscal tear. So I think it's safe to weight bear between zero and 90 degrees of flexion. Um, and then again, just gradually increasing flexion after four weeks. I'm Dr. Bork. Thank you so much for watching this video today.